Hello. So uh, today's vlog, what I want to do is recap our, I guess, our end of summer 2020 hiking trip that we took to Colorado. So that's what this vlog is going to be about, and I'm going to show you some footage from the trip. Now, if you really want to learn more about it, I encourage you to go read the written uh, blog that I actually wrote about this trip. I provide a lot more detail in that blog. I even go into some of the equipment that uh, that I like to use when uh, you know in the backcountry, and uh, so you definitely want to go read that and check that out um, if you enjoy uh, this this type of stuff. So. So this trip uh, basically started, it was like a four day trip. Day one was completely just driving for the most part. So we were on the road going all the way across Kansas on Interstate 70. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you now that is brutal, brutal. And uh, I-70 across Kansas, I don't know what it is. It's like, I don't know, 380 miles or something. It's just like it's never going to end. So I'm going to give you a little taste of that. Just watch this little here. I'm going to condense about eight hours uh, down into about 12 seconds just just uh, to uh, give you a little taste of what that was for that first eight hours. So, so there you go, eight hours of driving across Kansas, uh, which is uh, it's brutal. It's so boring. But anyway, we made it. We get into Colorado. Uh, we head up a little bit around the north side of Denver. And uh, then we get up there near, uh, I guess it's called Nederland, was the, kind of the town we, we kind of met up at. We filled our truck up, and made sure we had a full tank of fuel, and then headed out you know, into the wilderness right there, I guess. And uh, we headed into Arapaho National Forest and uh, headed up towards Rainbow Lakes Campground. And that was gonna be our first option to camp, but uh, unfortunately campground was full, which was kind of surprising because this was midweek. And uh, it was one of those campgrounds where you cannot reserve a spot. It was first come, first serve. So, um, but no big deal because we had a backup uh, plan and that was to do practice dispersed camping in the National Forest. Now I had already scoped out on the map a road, a forest service road, and it was a uh, road number 505. So we headed, uh, we headed down this 505 road, and very quickly we learned that this was a serious, serious off-road type of uh, type of route, and uh, not not going to be easy. Um, it took us over an hour to get one mile uh, down this road. And it was it was uh, so precarious that we basically had to get out of the vehicle at each little obstacle and try to kind of devise a strategy on how we were going to get around it uh, to the point of even like where we were going to place the tires um, and what angle you know we were going to come in so the truck wouldn't flip off a, you know off into a, a cliff or what have you. So um, it it was perilous, uh, a little bit nerve wracking. But it was very rewarding because once we made it about a mile down into this uh, far service road 505, we got to uh, a dispersed camping site that was marked on the map, and this was uh, camping site 11, and it turned out to be just a gorgeous, gorgeous campsite. So um, our first night, we've got a great campsite. Now we knew that this was going to be a little tough on us because we wanted to get to the trailhead in the morning our goal was to hike up to the Arapaho Glacier and you know to hike up into the high mountains you want to get an early start you don't want to be high up in the mountains above tree line once you know afternoon thunderstorms kick in you know it's just not a place that you want to be during a thunderstorm so we knew we were going to have to get up really early but um, it was worth it. We had a great site to camp. Uh, there was no one else around. Obviously, you know, nobody was going to be driving through there with the average vehicle. So it was just a, a really nice camping site. We had a nice creek adjacent to our campsite. So we had good water, a good water source right there nearby, which is really important. And uh, so we got settled in and the boys went to uh, gathering firewood and got us a nice fire going and I cooked some supper. 
And uh, we were just really pleased to just be, uh, we watched a beautiful sunset there out over that little creek and uh, in the mountains. So just a great, great spot. So uh, if you're ever on that uh, Forest Service Road 505 there in the Arapaho, uh, I can tell you that that Campsite 11 is, is, is killer. Um, so we knew uh, we had to get up really early the next morning um, just because we had to negotiate that road back out in the dark, which was going to add a, another wrinkle of, of uh, difficulty to that in itself. So, uh, so we got up about 4 a.m. Um, I made some coffee. and I think this coffee will be ready in about another 45 minutes. <laughs> All right, it's uh, 0422. We're headed to the trailhead. We've got this crew going, and uh, we have quite the uh, vehicle journey ahead of us just to get up in that trailhead on this Forest Service road. So, anyway, get it out and uh, uh, made it to the trailhead there at the Arapaho Glacier Trail. We got to the trailhead around 5 a.m. and uh, didn't have any problem getting parking. There's a little parking area there at the trailhead. And there was three or four other cars there, but I think only one of those cars were folks like us who were you know, getting there early. Uh, we did see that, that couple and they were there early to get started to head up to the top, to the, to the uh, glacier. Uh, so we, anyway, we got, you know, we got parked and uh, took off right there and uh, headed up about uh, you know, a little bit after 5 a.m. So we started our hike up the glacier and, and just gorgeous, gorgeous views uh, this, this entire way up. And I guess the, the hike was about seven miles each way and elevation gain was about 3,500 feet. So a very challenging hike. Uh, it started out in the, wood li in the tree line. So we were in the forest when we started. Uh, so pretty gentle, you know, climb in the, in the beginning. Uh, probably a good two and a half miles was in the tree line before we broke out and got above canopy. Uh, now, once we got above canopy, it started to, to get a lot different because two things started happening. One thing was the trail became very rocky, so it was, it was very difficult to walk. Uh, fortunately, I had brought and used trekking poles. Uh, so that helped, you know, me and old man, that was certainly something that I was glad I had. The boys didn't use them and, and probably didn't need them. But I was glad to have trekking poles for that, that part of it, particularly on the way back down. Um, but we, uh, the, the other thing up there above the tree line too was uh, the wind started really picking up. Even though, you know, it was early in the day uh, still, um, but uh, right away, it didn't take long for those winds to, to really, really start kicking in, blowing pretty hard, um, and, and it was cold, obviously, too. So, so uh, which felt kind of good, you know, obviously when you're walking. Uh, but we probably made it up. Uh, we, we, you know, we took in some of the views. There were just some incredible views. There were quite a few false summits on this trail, so you would think you were at the top, and then you weren't. You, you were just at the top of a small mountain, and you had, the, you know, bigger and bigger, bigger mountains ahead of you, actually. So that kind of messes with your, your mental game when you look ahead of you and you think, oh, I'm almost there and, you know, we're going to be at the glacier. And then you get there and realize, oh, no, you know, you got a long way to go. So, so that was good. That, that challenged us. And we made it up to the, uh, to the glacier probably around 10 a.m., so not too bad. And uh, we were kind of in a saddle, and you'll see this on the video, <clears throat> but we were kind of standing in a saddle between Mount Baldy and South Arapaho Peak, South Arapaho Mountain. So we were kind of perched on this saddle and the winds were just unbelievable. So these winds were just, they were just brutal. And so we just decided not to summit uh, the Mount Arapaho or Mount Baldy, either one. They were both right there and you can kind of see in the video. <clears throat> it would have only been a few more hundred feet but just the way those winds were blowing um, and just, I guess, most, mostly for safety concern, we just were happy to you know, take in the glacier, enjoy that. Um, and, and it was getting later in the day, so we were ready to kind of beat feet on down off of there. So uh, with that, we turned and, uh, you know, started <clears throat> heading back down back to the car. 
and I would say we got back down to the car probably about the boys beat me of course they got back down there about one o'clock and I think I probably got in there 1 30 something like that maybe maybe two and uh, <clears throat> we loaded up and headed on to uh, to our second uh, destination for part two of the trip so for the second part of our trip we uh, our goal was to get down to Mount Elbert and that's near Leadville Colorado and so we headed down uh, down there and uh, we went to a, a region uh, called Half Moon Creek. Now this creek kind of runs between Mount Massive and Mount Elbert and Half Moon Creek is within the National Forest uh, there I believe it's San Isabel National Forest and so just again another just gorgeous area it's just southwest of Leadville just a few miles out of town so we got down there, uh, it was about a two and a half hour drive from Nieder, Nederland uh, up, up where the Arapaho Glacier was. Uh, so we get in there, uh, we probably got in there about 5 p.m. I guess that day. And uh, we drove down uh, into the National Forest along Half Moon Creek on Half Moon Creek Road. And we ended up staying, um, we were just looking for a place to camp and you could practice dispersed camping all along the creek, but there were a lot of people along that creek. Uh, so we finally found a, a designated camping area, um, and it was called uh, Half Moon Creek West uh, Campground, and it was gorgeous, and there was nobody in there. So um, they had a water source right where you entered with a you know a hand pitcher pump, and uh, had a had a, actually had a very clean, very nice latrine right at the campsite as well. So. Uh, it was great. So we got this awesome campsite. There was nobody around. It was just us. Um, so a great place to spend our, our second night. Now our goal on the third on that next day was to summit Mount Elbert, which is the um, you know the highest second highest mountain in the lower 48 uh, after Mount Whitney. Now um, we were so smoked from that day one hike uh, up to the Arapaho Glacier that we didn't have anything left in our tank and so in hindsight we should have put in a zero day right there and then you know added one more day to our trip but uh, we didn't do that so we decided we would just kind of hang out at camp the next morning and uh, you know eat, eat some I cooked some deer sausage and we had some eggs and we even cooked some keto pancakes and just kind of relaxed there around camp and uh, Everything was everything was great except the keto pancakes. They they tasted like cardboard and sand. So we ended up kind of feeding that to the gray jays who uh, turned out to entertain us uh, pretty readily. And evidently, gray jays really love keto pancakes. Is what we found out. Um, so after that, we just kind of chilled out that morning. After that, we uh, went to uh, a nearby lake. There were a lot of lakes in this area. These high altitude lakes, and they were just full of trout just amazing fishery and we didn't have fish we didn't have any fishing equipment but certainly be something I would bring with me next time uh, so our next deal we just went over and checked out a, a lake right there called Emerald Lake and uh, just a gorgeous lake again you could see the trout you know swimming around there were a few people there fishing and uh, it was kind of a daily use area so you pay us pay a fee I think it was a few bucks, and you could you could uh, stay there all day and fish. Um, so if I go back, certainly that's going to be part of the deal because I'm sure that those trout were very very tasty. Um, so after that, we kind of looked around the, the lake and kind of scoped out some other camping spots, and then we went back down into Leadville. And to finish off our trip, we had reserved an Airbnb for our final night, and it was a place called In of the clouds so uh, it was kind of a hostel really kind of for CDT hikers but a really cool place and we really enjoyed it we had our own room uh, with five beds and our own private bathroom so turned out to be a really nice uh, hostel and uh, the host was really great she she took care of us she gave us some some good advice and she actually told us about a trail to hike nearby um, and it was called the Mineral Belt Loop Trail that went all the way around the town of Leadville. And this was a really a neat trail. It's kind of made for mountain biking, but we just, of course, just walked a couple of miles of it. But it was really neat because it had a lot of interpretive signage along the trail that described all the mining activity, you know, that really built that town. 
and so we got to see a lot of these mining artifacts if you will um, along this trail so really really neat to see that and I was amazed at what good shape the, all this stuff was in you know this these mines were in in you know they were in service in the mid 1800s and uh, so a lot of that stuff was still there and still in you know fairly good shape you know a lot of the parts and pieces so so we enjoyed kind of checking that out and uh, went and had a pizza, a uh, carnivore pizza there that night um, at a place called Mountain Pies uh, there in Leadville and just had a great time in Leadville. I was really pleased Leadville, uh, it still shows it's got some blue collar roots because of that mining industry and um, it is becoming a tourist thing now. <clears throat> it's not so much a mining town anymore, but it's still still has you know a welcoming feeling and uh, I think whether you're a hiker or a hunter uh, you would feel welcome in Leadville so I certainly want to go back and uh, spend some more time in Leadville and that Half Moon Creek Valley uh, all of that was really really pretty uh, so you know next day we loaded up and back to the land of the sunflowers and uh, but a great trip um, biggest thing I would change is I certainly would add in a zero day uh, probably on the front end and in the middle uh, to help kind of acclimate for the altitude and uh, give a little break in between those two big hikes. But uh, otherwise, uh, we had a great time and hope you, hope you uh, enjoyed some of this video footage.